Hello guys, welcome back to LBM Pew Pew. As promised, I am making this video now to teach people how to rat Hellgates. Now, as previously mentioned, ratting is kind of cancerous in this game, and I don't want to be the one responsible for spreading that cancer. So I'm not just going to show you how to rat, but I'm also going to show you how to counter rats. Now, teaching people to rat is actually going to be much more complicated than teaching them how to counter it, because it's actually very easy to counter rats. So you find that the majority of this video is going to be talking about how to rat, and then near the end, I'll show you a very easy way to never lose loot for rats, along with some tips on uh, what not to do when you're faced up against a rat. Now, first, let's talk about exactly what is a rat and why do people rat. A rat is a player in 2v2 Hellgates that steals loot from the chest that spawns at the end when you kill all three bosses and then they try to run away with the loot. For the most part, a rat is not actually trying to fight you. It's not going to try to PvP you. Uh, he just grabs the loot and then he runs, which is why it's so frustrating to be playing against a rat. So why do people rat? Do you actually make more money as a rat than if you were to play the Hellgate normally? Uh, not really. If you where if you were to rat a Hellgate, that would make the Hellgate last a lot longer than it normally would because uh, usually people will, sp you know, if they are really upset about losing their loot to you, then they will spend a long time chasing you. So uh, your silver per hour is actually going to be lower than if you were to just get good at 2v2 and you just win these Hellgates. So the biggest reason why people like to rat Hellgates, at least for me, the biggest reason why I like to ride Hellgates, it's simply because it's actually the best and most profitable solo PvP content in this game. So there is actually very little solo PvP content in this game. Solo dungeons, I'm sure you've all experienced it by now, it's not actually solo, especially in higher tiers. Uh, you can, If you're trying to solo dungeon dive, you can spend up to half an hour looking for dungeons. And then when you finally find a clear dungeon, you might end up finding three players inside. The worst one that I've seen so far is while I was trying to dungeon dive, I literally find a dungeon, a solo dungeon that has a tier two blob inside. So pretty often solo dungeon diving is just going to turn out to be a big waste of time. Solo Hellgates, on the other hand, is actually pretty profitable uh, because solo Hellgates is consistent. You go into a Hellgate and you're going to play at the worst against two players. You're not you're never gonna go into a Hellgate and find a tier two blob inside, right? So uh, it's actually the most consistent solo PvP that you can find in this game right now. And ratting is just the best way to ensure that your Hellgates are profitable. There are a lot of solo Hellgate builds out there. You can solo Hellgate as a Werble like you see Trillobite does in his streams. Or you can solo Hellgates as a great fire staff, like you see Shemerson doing in his streams. But at the end of the day, none of these other solo Hellgate builds are as consistently profitable as ratting. Because with all of these other solo Hellgate builds, uh, you only have one way to win. And that is if you kill the other team. But sometimes that's just not possible. For example, you can use my Warbo build to do solo Hellgates. But like I've said before in my Warbo video, that Warbos are just not very good at killing healers. So if you were to use my solo Warbo build and you just get matched up against healers all the time, then you're not going to win a whole lot of Hellgates. You'll end up just spending a lot of time running away from the other team and not really getting anything. But when you're ratting, you actually have two ways to win. You can kill the other team or you can just steal their loot and run away. So that increases your chance of actually getting something out of every Hellgate. So to sum it up, ratting is not actually more profitable than if you're good at just the regular 2v2 Hellgates, but it is the most profitable thing for you to do if you were a solo PvP player. Now that's out of the way, let's talk about how to actually be a rat. So first, you'll want to copy this build. Uh, as you can see on the screen right here, it's Hellion, Knight Armor, Scholar Sandals, One Hand Spear, Mist Collar, and a cape of your choice. Now, the cape should be one out of these three choices. Four Sterling Cape, Undead Cape, or Heretic Cape. My default cape is usually the Four Sterling Cape, but sometimes when you're 
matched up against a team that just don't have any CC, the first starting cape doesn't actually do anything for you. So what you could do is you keep a undead cape or a heretic cape in your inventory, and then when you get your inspect on the other team and you see that they have no stuns or anything, you can switch to either undead cape or a heretic cape. The heretic cape is pretty useless in every other situation, but for ratting it's actually pretty good because it makes you harder to catch and it's a cheaper alternative to the undead cape. So what you do with this build is you wait for the other team to start the chest, then you dash in, knock them away with a wind wall, drop your smoke bomb from the alien hood onto the chest, and that'll make you invisible so you can loot the chest while you're stealthed. Now you have to loot pretty quickly, and you probably won't be able to get everything out of the chest, so just go after the important stuff. Look for the big T8 items, look for uh, royal items, look for expensive items like royal jackets or hellion jackets, uh, and look for the books. The books are very important. They are the most consistent, valuable drop in these Hellgate loots, and they can drop in pretty big numbers. I've seen uh, I've seen one chest dropping over a dozen books before, so try to get those. And you probably noticed that I had a Guardian Helmet in my inventory, and I just swapped to it just now. Uh, so that's because the Hellion Hood, after the initial snatch, the Hellion Hood actually becomes kind of useless. So you'll want to switch to a Guardian Helmet afterwards to help you survive the chasing part of the, of the game. So after you kill the three bosses, this is where you want to stand to wait for the box to spawn. Uh, right here where the three mobs are, the big demon and the two little bats. Uh, so the reason for that is because when you're standing right here, you can still see the box from where you're at. Uh, you can see the box spawning. And right here, uh, the other team cannot just engage on you, because if they try, you can actually kill them by knocking them into a mob explosion. I'm, up, I'm actually about to do it to these two guys right here. So they're disrespecting the fact that I have this, these mobs protecting me and they're gonna try to engage on me. And see, I'm gonna get the mobs low with my Q and I'm gonna finish them with my E. And when I use my E, I'm gonna try to hit them as well. And then I'm gonna use my wind wall to push them back into the explosion and that pretty much is one shots them. So this is also a what not to do kind of tip for if you're playing against a rat. Uh, if you're playing against a rat, don't try to engage onto them through the mob. That's actually very dangerous for to do. So here you're gonna see me doing the same trick again, but on a different spawn. Uh, I'm gonna first prep these mobs by hit, getting them low with my Q, and then when they chase too close, I finish the mobs with my E, and I knock them up at the same time to make it easier for me to line up that wind wall. And then I force them into the mobs with the wind wall. So uh, here I only killed one of them, and luckily it is the DPS. So when you have when you're doing uh, this trick to a team that has a healer and a DPS, uh, the ideal target to kill first is the DPS because the healer by himself can't really kill you, right? So uh, here I kill the DPS first. And then I just walk next to the healer until I can switch on to a different uh, chest piece to do more damage. So I switch on to a major rope that I had on me, and then I just chase down the healer. And I do end up killing that healer as well, but uh, <laughs> he, he actually kind of had the same idea. He looted his friend's ball casters, and he tried to fight me with the ball casters, but uh, it didn't work out for him, because the spear actually has some utility to it. You see right there, I interrupted his uh, ball caster E with my E, uh, so he loses the fight. <laughs> and that little interrupt right there is a pretty good example of why I prefer the spear so much over the blood ladder. Usually you see people running this this uh, rat thing with a blood ladder, but uh, I think the spear is just better for when you decide that you want to turn around and you kill them instead of running. Uh, the spear just has more utility for that. So the next tip that I have for you guys is not just a ratting tip, but just a general Hellgate tip, and that is you should always inspect the other team before you engage onto them. It's uh, basically knowing yourself and knowing your enemy. Right, so here I know I can tell that this guy's running some kind of a bow because he threw that Q at me, but I wasn't sure which kind. So I get to inspect on him, and I see that he's running a whaling bow cheese. So if you've never seen this kind of this kind of cheese before, uh, the idea of his build is basically 
you one shot the mobs with a QWE combo from the Welding Blow, and then you use the Force Field skill or the Bop skill on the Cloth Helmet to knock your chaser back into the mob explosion, kind of like what we did with the wind wall, just a different way to do it. But here, because I inspected him first, I knew what kind of cheese he was trying to attempt, so I knew how to play against it. Right? So I, you saw me just dash across those stairs super fast, and there was, and here's another uh, advantage of this build is that you move so fast with your uh, with your inner focus, your E, and your focus run, it's pretty much impossible for people to land any skill shots on you. So warble players, well in bow players, they just can't hit you with their skill shots. And like I said earlier, the spear actually can do quite a bit of damage and has a lot of utility. So don't be in that mindset of, I'm a rat, I should be running away. If you inspect the other guy first and you see that it's something you can kill, just kill him. You'll get more loot that way. So another thing that you could do, and I don't always do this, but you can keep a fin robe in your inventory uh, because a fin robe is very good for killing healers. So with a spear, you have your uh, you have your E. Forget the name of the skill, but the dash on your E, uh, it's a knockoff, right? So you have one form of CC right there, and then. Uh, in your fin robe, you're gonna have another form of CC, right? So when you're killing healers, you're gonna need those CC chains to keep interrupting their heals. Uh, this is especially helpful for holy healers, because holy healers cannot really heal themselves while they're getting feared. Um, so here you saw I do uh, I did the wind wall trick and I blew up the DPS on the other team, and then I disengaged to switch over to the fin robe, and. Their healer, uh, he couldn't chase me uh, while I was running away from him because if he did, I could just loop around and I would finish his teammate while he was chasing me, right? So um, he was camping on his teammate's body, which is waiting for me to come back and do the finish, right? So I switched to the fin row while he was sitting there and waiting. And you saw me use the, the fin row the first time there to uh, fear him off while I do the execute to his to his teammate, and then uh, this is gonna take a while, so I might speed this up, but uh, you'll see that the fin robe is also gonna help me in just killing this healer. So sometimes while you're getting chased, the other team would split up and they try to pincer you in the middle. And when this happens, you'll end up having to run through one of them. And the best way to do that is to use your E to hit the other guy and dash through him and end up on the other side. Because when you do this, sometimes you end up canceling some key spells on them. So for example, right here, I cancel the Contagious Fire on this Fire Mage. But some other spells that you could potentially cancel include um, the Bowcaster Ease, the Inner Focus on Pike Players, and Focus Runs. So this ability to interrupt is another uh, little perk that you have for running the Spear over running a Blood Letter. So because of the fact that your E knocks people up, it also really helps you set up for that wind wall thing that we were doing earlier. And here I'm going to show you another example of me doing that wind wall trick to blow someone up. Now this is th this is going to be something that is still doable if you use the blood letter, because the blood letter you kind of do a similar thing just without the knock up. Uh, but the blood letter also don't have an AOE Q, right? So if you saw how I set up those two mobs right there, uh, the, the AOE Q really helps me get them both down to low health at the same time. And the having that little knock up on the E just makes it easier for you to line up the wind wall. Now, like I said earlier, the spear actually does quite a bit of damage just on its own. 
So you don't always have to rely on the wind wall trick to kill someone. Right, so here I'm getting chased right now by another guy that's also running basically the exact same build as I am, only where they shield as their offhand, and a guy that's running a uh, knight armor warbow build. Right, so I I'm gonna try to get out of combat here, and I'm gonna switch to Finderobe again, uh, for, you know, because cloth armor does more damage, right, and plus I'm doing a 1v2 here, so the Finderobe is going to help me keep one of them off of me while I kill the other one. Okay, so I'm going to speed up this clip now so you can watch how this fight goes. While you're watching the rest of this fight, pay attention to how many Qs and Es the Warble player misses. This goes back to the point I was making earlier about how it's really hard to land those skill shots when you have your inner focus and your focus run and you're just going super fast. Now, unfortunately, the Warble player actually did end up getting away from me because of his undead cape, but it's still a 1v2 win here without a mob explosion. All right, so in this next clip, I'm gonna introduce you to a kind of cheese that some of you might not have seen before, and it's the double stealth one-shot build. So both of these guys are running one-shot pike builds, and you probably saw when I inspected that guy that he had a invisibility potion on. Right, so the idea behind their build is to stay out of vision range from the chest, right? And then uh, when the chest goes down, by the way, you can tell if the chest has been opened on the minimap. So when the chest is about to spawn, there'll be like a blue triangle thing in the middle. And when the chest has been opened, that blue triangle will disappear, right? So the, the idea of their build is to wait until that triangle disappears, and then they will turn on their inner focus, stack up their cues, and then drink up their invisibility potion and charge up to you. And because they're running pikes, they're also using inner focus. Uh, so they can actually run up to you from beyond the vision range before the invisibility potion runs out, right? So this can be a pretty dangerous cheese if you didn't know it was coming, or if you were just uh, on the chest looting, right? because they can actually come up to you, kill you, before you're even done looting, while you're still looking at the loot page. Now, that didn't work on me, because I was, uh, I was patiently waiting at the mobs where I told you guys uh, you can just wait across that little gap right there and just watch the chest. Yeah, so I was waiting there and I never opened the chest myself. So they actually ran out of patience and they went to check on the box. And then when they saw that I'm a rat, they decided to just engage on me. But because I'm running knight armor, spear, I have some disengage. So I survived the one burst, right? And then I heal up with a guardian helmet and the catfish and the healing pots. So I come back and I end up killing both of them. Now, because they're running uh, the demon cape, as well, because they're running the, the one-shot pike build, right? The demon cape is most of their damage. So after they blew their capes, they lose a lot of that burst. So uh, after that, I'm actually able to come back and just run them down and kill them. And now I'm gonna speed it up here again, but uh, this is just to show you guys that, you know, this build is not just for running away. You can actually kill people with this build. So once you're used to it and you know what you can do with this build, lose that mindset of, I'm a rat, I have to run. Right? If you see something, if you see an opening in the other team, turn around and try to kill them. It's actually pretty good for doing that. All right, so when you are trying to use the wind wall into explosion trick to kill people, uh, you should try to do it when they're split up. So usually when you're just running away, uh, people will split up and try to pincer you. If they try to chase you at all, they'll probably try to split up and pincer you. So when they do that, you can try to do this trick on them one at a time. This is especially important if you're fighting against a double DPS comp, because if you're tanking the mobs, and they're both on you, uh, it, it actually gets pretty dangerous. You can't imagine why, right? And the reason why I chose to show you this clip is because in this clip, I screwed up my wind wall several times. Like, you probably just saw right there, uh, the first attempt I did, 
the mobs got reset, so that didn't work. And then I went back in and I tried again, and um, and the and the bear paw guy he knew it was coming, so he avoided it. And again, it didn't work. And the next one you're gonna see the the healer guy comes up, and I'm gonna try to blow him up, but then he lags and he teleports back, right? So I kind of fumbled there because of his uh, because of his rubber bending basically. Uh, so I screw up again, right? So things like this can happen, and the wind wall trick, it's, it's not going to work every time, right? So uh, it would be best for you if you do this when they're split up. That way, if you do screw up, or if the game screws you up, uh, you're not going to be in a whole lot of danger. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to counter rats. The number one counter to this method of ratting is the fin robe, the one that fears you away when you get too close, right? So if you have, if you're running some kind of a comp that already uses a fin robe, so for example, this team right here, their broadsword has a fin robe, then all you have to do is just both of you stack up on the chest, and when, when you open the chest, you turn on the fin robe, and then you loot. And if the rat comes in and tries to loot as well, uh, the fin will, the fin row will just automatically turn them away, throw them off, right? Like it like it just happened right there. Now, now you can make this even better if you pocket a night helmet. A night helmet is not even one thousand silver. It's super cheap. Just buy buy a flat four and keep it in your pocket. And when the uh, when you're standing there and you see the rat looking at you, you know you're facing up against a rat. You just switch on the night helmet. Right, and then when you do the same thing, you just stack on the chest and you uh, open it. Then you can turn on the fear robe and the night helmet. All right, that way you won't even be interrupted by the rat's wind wall uh, when he tries to knock you away. Now, if you're running some kind of a comp that doesn't involve using a fear robe, it's okay. You can just add another thing in your inventory. It's a night armor. Right, so the night armor, the wind wall, it's still uh, basically does the same thing and it's super cheap, right? So you can just keep it in your, in your inventory and switch to it when you see that you're up against a rat. Now, when you, if you are using the wind wall, don't use it like these guys did, right? They basically wasted their wind walls. If you're going to use the wind wall, uh, you can use it on the stairs or you can use it closer, tighter to the chest. Uh, that will make it harder for the rat to just go around your wall. So I have two more tips about playing against rats, and I'm going to talk about them both in this last clip. The first tip is don't chase the rat. If you use the counters I talked about, the rat should never get your loot in the first place. But if you didn't want to burn an extra set or you screwed up on the execution and the rat gets your loot, then you should just let the rat go. Because it's really not worth your time to chase the rat. You probably won't be able to kill him anyway because their build is just made for getting away from you. Uh, so unless they make a mistake, then it shouldn't be possible for you to chase down a rat and kill them. Now, even if you are going to chase them, if you're going to be like super persistent and you chase them until they make a mistake, it's probably going to take you 25 to 30 minutes to actually kill him. Um, so it's really, again, not worth your time, because in that time it takes for you to chase, uh, to chase down and kill one rat, you could probably win two or three Hellgates already. Now, uh, lastly, when you decide that it's not worth chasing the rat and you decide to just leave the Hellgate, make sure you time your exits together. So these guys, they're going to make this mistake. You're going to see the Groove Keeper is going to exit the Hellgate before his partner does. So I'm going to go up there and tack the Blazing Staff in, right? And I'm going to end up chasing down this Blazing Staff and killing him and getting his Blazing Staff and Cultist Robe from him just because his partner left him, right? So don't be that partner. If you're going to leave, leave together. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful for everybody. Whether you're someone that wants to try ratting or you're someone that's tired of rats stealing your stuff, I hope these tips will be helpful for everyone. Uh, now, if you think this was good information, please drop me a like and a sub. And don't forget to come check out my Twitch channel. I'll have the link down below, and I'll see you guys there.